Are you the doctor? Hello, precious. Did you think I'd never get here then? Brought you these. Brought you your favorite. And some flowers. Comfortable here, are you? Treating you well. Looking after you, are they? Nice, friendly staff. I met one of the nurses downstairs. Very jolly girl, I thought. I'll get her to put your flowers in water later. Doctor, look at my baby. He's dying. Bertie's dying. Be with you in a minute. Just attending to this lady. Why now? There's a lovely girl. Feeling sleepy, are we? Are we going home for the holidays? Soon. Oh dear, oh dear. I didn't want to go away this year. I haven't made plans. It's fine. Just fine. Give the wife something. Not getting too bored, are you, darling? No, of course not. I'm Try enjoying this one. Myself. It's nice and fruity. Oh, do you think I should? I've already sampled. Go on. Right it'll here. do you good. Excuse me a minute. Your husband's in the trade, I take it? Yes. How interesting. Excuse me, I'm sorry to do this to you, darling, but I've got a dash. What's happened? There's been a cock-up over an order. Apparently, we've delivered the wrong champagne to a big society wedding. Can't somebody else go? Well, it's my order. The boss insists that I handle it. But I'm really sorry. I promise. I'll leave the needle point to you, Graham. Small, neat stitches, if you please. The dead deserve our best. Ah, oh, Dr. Hogg, good of you to accommodate us at such short notice. I know my minister will be most grateful. Uh, do you know Hills and Mowen? Yes, we've met. 
We doesn't often my little workshop is honoured by such exalted company as a permanent secretary. I must raise my fees. We've been waiting to see if you've any definite opinion as to the cause of the woman's death. I'm not in the habit of forming anything less, Sir Charles. My findings will be in your possession as soon as my assistant has typed up my notes. Could you possibly give us a verbal summary? Did you find anything untoward, for instance? Most deaths are untoward. Mrs. Nicholson... Correction. Miss Oates was prematurely senile. Professor, it's been established that Miss Oates uh, was given an unauthorised injection. Have you been able to identify that? If a toxic substance hastened the lady's departure from this planet, my laboratory technicians will isolate it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've had a long, hard morning, and I'm ready for my lunch. Secretary will see you in the study. I expected you earlier, Charles. Now I've got my boxes to get through. So I can't spare a great deal of time. Oh, no, of course not, Minister. I apologise for the delay. I don't think you met Hilsden from MI6. No, I don't think I have. Want some gin? Not for me, sir. Thank you. I'm driving. From what I've gathered, this old woman was a burnt-out case. Isn't that the jargon? Sit you down. Um, by the time the Russians had released her, Minister, she wasn't of any use to anybody. Why do you say Russians? I understood she was held by the East Germans. Initially, yes, sir. Now, give me a straight answer to this. Is there any CIA connection that I don't know of? The Prime Minister and I are not prepared to stomach a repeat of the Glanville fiasco. When Miss Oates was in the field, she would have come into contact with our CIA friends in the course of her duties. Well, duties is an odd word to employ where spying is concerned, isn't it? Uh, how would you describe them, Minister? Well, they imply something worthwhile. I've always held to the view that the whole espionage industry is a squalid waste of public money. <laughs> well, I think the point that Hilson is making, Minister, is that the... Late Miss Oates was a very courageous woman who finally paid the price of patriotism. When she was returned from Lubyanka... Where's Lubyanka? Moscow. It's the KGB prison. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, I hadn't heard that pronunciation before. Uh, Hilston tells me they did a very thorough job on her there, not the least of which was breaking four fingers. Hmm. Did she talk? Yes. Well, all very distressing, I'm sure. But the only thing that concerns me right now is avoiding another monumental cock-up. Was she murdered? We're awaiting the result of certain tests. As I see it, if an honourable way can be found for her to be buried without further fuss, so much the better for everyone concerned. I'm sure we all share your view, Minister. The clear conscience is not to be despised these days. Good. I'm sure you can handle that side of it without involving me. Want something special, do you? Something to get you turned on? You guys are all the same. You've all got dirty minds. I could put on a nurse's uniform if you like. One of my regulars because I absolutely ape for nurses. Does that interest you? Yeah. A nurse will be fine. 
It is funny how you guys go for nurses. Me, I hate anything to do with hospitals. I like to put names to people. Makes it seem more friendly. <gasps> thinking what I'm thinking. What are you thinking? I was just wondering if that'll be the last time we ever make love. Why do you say that? Just a premonition. You don't have to go back to Berlin. Huh? I mean, I could... Fix it with control. Don't spoil our last day. Day, you see. You said it, our last day. Until I get back. Come on, let's change the subject, please. Do you know what I was really thinking? That our friend Jock, such a liar. That story he told us, it's, it's got to be one of his typical exaggerations. What story was that? Don't you remember the one about the dying flies? Did you believe that? It could be true, I suppose. They have to die somewhere. We all die somewhere. Yes. But in the same room every year in the castle museum. There's got to be a con. Why don't we go and see? Hmm? No, you mean? Yes. Take our mind off other things. I'd love to call his bluff just for once. You are extraordinary. <laughs> I'll never understand you. No. But you will remember me. Mm. What made you the way you are? The life we both lead. Can we take the car? The walk will do you good. No, it won't. I'm always much healthier when I don't take exercise. Why is it women have so much energy after the event? At least you call it an event. Because we're much tougher than men. Anyway, don't be such an old grouch. It's an adventure. You'll love it when we get there. Bet you ten to one jock's lying. The only bet I have with you is, is if it's true, you don't go to Berlin. In that case, all bets are off. No, it's... That's the museum, so it's not there. Well, jock said you had to look for a sign marked verboten. Ah. That may be the one.
My whole body feels like it's crawling with them. It's like a nightmare I used to have as a child. Imagine that you were sleeping in that room and they start to come and smother you. Oh, don't imagine it. Forget it. Forget it. Come on. Let's get out of here. Alec? Sorry, darling. I was trying not to wake you. Where on earth have you been? It's six in the morning. Well, I got involved. Oh, I've been going frantic all night. I've been telephoning the police, the hospital. What? What were you involved with? Well, I had to stay at the wedding reception to make sure everything was OK. Then the car broke down. I ditched it. I had to walk miles. Why didn't you ring me? You could have rung me. You must have known I'd be worried. I'm sorry, love. I didn't think. No. Having too good a time without me, I suppose. You knew that the dead woman was not Mrs. Nicholson, but a Miss Caroline Oates. I knew she was a special case. After all, you don't get the George Medal for nothing, do you? Did she ever discuss her past with you? Everything they talk about here is in the past. She had her lucid moments. What did she talk about on those occasions? Did she mention any names? Ah, uh, Bailey was one that I think I remember, Alec, and somebody called Jock. Now, she talked about him a lot. I saw in her medical report that you noted a slight improvement in her condition over the last three months? Yes, it was marginal, but there were some signs of improvement. I said as much to her only surviving relative, that was her uncle, when he phoned. Can you remember when he last called? I don't log such things. Roughly? A week. Perhaps ten days ago. Did you tell him about the improvement in her condition? I told him the truth, no more, no less. Was that wrong? There is no uncle. But I spoke to him myself on several occasions. I didn't say he doesn't exist. Just the man you spoke to is as bogus as her murderer. On the afternoon she was murdered, was everything normal before the incident? I don't know what you consider normal, Mr. Hilston. Your ideas may differ from mine. Many of the patients here are incontinent, some are bordering on the insane, and some have terminal conditions. It would be very dishonest of me to say that everything runs smoothly here all the time. But we were all very upset by what... happened. I still can't believe such a dreadful thing did. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Thank you. I don't normally behave as stupidly as this. I wonder if uh, somebody could let me know when the funeral is going to take place. I'd like to pay my last respects, particularly if she had no... F what? Now, that's very odd. I've just remembered something I haven't mentioned before. On her bedside table, she had a photograph, a picture of a man and a young woman. Herself as a young woman? No, no, it wasn't herself. It was a young girl, very contemporary. Could I see it, please? No. That's what's so odd. It's disappeared. After she died, it wasn't there. This is the final call for passengers on Austria Airlines flight number 462 for Salzburg. Passengers are requested to go immediately to gate 24.
did you? I'm told in England everything stops for tea. However, we are not in England and you're expected elsewhere, so get in and drive. <laughs> Don't think about it. I never go out alone, even in broad daylight. There are so many nasty men around, and Mummy always warned me. Get in. Enjoy that, did you? I always love a magical mystery tour. It don't get fresh. It might all end in tears. What is this, a gay cabaret act? Oh, that's right. We drag up and tear telephone directories in half. Hey, you're good. You've been practicing on each other? Nothing personal. Just a house rule. Come this way. have finally brought our guest. We were getting anxious. Mr. Miller stopped on the road for a cup of tea. Well, he wasn't expecting our hospitality, so we must make allowances. Pleasant flight, I trust. Would you care for something stronger than tea? Yes, a drink would be nice. Ronnie, bring the Chablis, will you? I believe congratulations are in order. I did what I was paid to do. No more, no less. Well, a little more, perhaps. We'll come back to that later. Meanwhile, I believe you have something for us. Very good. Very good. A collector's item. Well worth your trip. So tell me, how was jolly old England? <laughs> Such a backward country in so many ways, still clinging to the belief it has influence and power in world affairs. Did you by any chance read your English papers this morning? The British press has a way of highlighting the sordid side of life. Perhaps you came across this item concerning the murder of a young prostitute in what is euphemistically called a massage parlor. It was what happened later that gave us cause for concern. That is why we decided to vary past procedures and bring you here. What disturbed us was your timing. One mistake has a habit of leading on to another. It would be a tragedy if a man of your talents took himself out of circulation because of a few moments of pleasure. Is that the only reason I'm here to have a philosophical discussion? My friend, your problem is you still ask why. We never do. Had we thought it necessary to kill you, it would have been done in London. Might eat out here tonight. How do you prefer your steak, rare or ruined? Just as it comes. There's something so satisfying, so basic, don't you think, about eating in the open air? <laughs> That was for my benefit, presumably. Ronnie had developed a terminal form of greed, fondness for two paychecks. He had been corrupted by the gospel of the blessed Ayatollah. 
So Moscow decided he would meet with a boating accident. It is well known these lakes are treacherous. Shall we go indoors? What did Hogg come up with? She was killed by a toxin called DS7. Causes complete respiratory failure within 90 seconds. Thank God we're not really selling this muck. Mm. What gets me is nothing makes any sense. I mean, why bother to trade her when she's absolutely gaga, and then years later have her eliminated? The Austrian station's kaput. With Jock and Caroline both dead, the stables are cleaned out. There's, there's nobody left. Except you. With them both gone, there's nobody else but you. But if they want to get me, why kill her? Why kill a burnt-out case? To force you into something. Hello? Uh, he left ten minutes ago, sir. Uh, it must be the traffic. I can assure you he was on his way. Right. That was God, our great controller. I must um, get a new watch. You were expected ten minutes ago. He sounded a bit scratchy. Have I always taught you check and double check? I could have taken you then. Instead of a hand, I could have put a knife to your throat. Your holiday has made you forget rule one. Just as it made you forget how to keep this place clean. It's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. When I want to be a house I'll let you know. So, now you can greet me properly. And why should I? And then I'm tired. I need to get out of this clothes and have a bath. Okay. I can wait. Oh, just tell me one thing. Did he make the delivery? Yes. You saw the photograph yourself? It was destroyed in front of me. Now, where's mine? Make it yourself. How's the great Hansel? Still as friendly as ever? I don't like Hansel. È viscido. Never mind that. Tell me what you said. You make everywhere a rubbish tip. So it's a tip, who cares? We're moving on shortly. I'm waiting to hear what Hansel wants us to do. Me, not us. I have to find out how much Hilston knows. So, I have to see my old lover tonight, the most honorable Sir Charles Belfrage.
un piccolo pensierino per te. How do I look? I don't deserve anybody so perfect. Cremation, I think. Much the best in the absence of any written preference. It's, it's, it's so much neater. Has the advantage of safeguarding the environment. I think you'll find that gives no pain. Very good health, my man. Jeff. Mm. Will you be going, sir? Mm, will I go where? To the funeral. I'm rather inclined not to. The matron of the nursing home asked if she could go. Yes, again, I, I think not. I think just your discreet presence. Though it, it might be a good touch of the wife went along with you, make it look normal. A uh, non-religious ceremony, we wouldn't want to attract any attention from the locals or the press. Were there any further leads? A couple of loose ends. The matron revealed that somebody had been keeping tabs on her. Perhaps we should have done the same. Yes, well, being wise after the event. Uh, you mentioned two loose ends. What was the second? There was a photograph missing from Caroline's bedside after the murder. Significant? Well, ordinary thieves don't steal snapshots. What was the photograph of, do we know? A photograph of a young girl, not Caroline. Yes, well, it all adds up to something, Alec. And that's what they pay us to find out, me humble servants of the Crown. Some of us humbler than others. I've just had this terrible migraine. Expect it's the weather. It's been heavy all day. Yes, I expect so. How was your day? Oh, so so. A few good orders. Oh, I uh, bought you a couple of bottles of the new sparkling wine we're pushing. It's non vintage, but very pleasant. Oh, good. Well, I suppose I'd better think about getting dinner. Why don't we go out for a change, huh? You don't want to be bending over a hot stove if you're feeling iffy. No, no, I don't. I don't think so. I look such a mess. You look all right to me. Come on, let's go out. I'll run you a nice hot bath, huh? All right. Talk me into it. Yeah. We could go to that, uh... A new Italian restaurant. I hear it's very good. All right. Yeah, we both need to go out more, enjoy ourselves a bit. You don't go out enough. You let me hear once. That was brought home to me today. We had uh, something of a shock at the office. You brought what home? We had a shock today. Oh, what was that? Did I uh, ever mention a, a Mrs. Nicholson to you? Mrs. who? Nicholson. No, I don't think so. What about her? One minute she's uh, having a morning break in the canteen. Then suddenly, without any warning, just keels over. We, uh, we rushed her off to hospital, but she was dead on arrival. Awful. So you can guess uh, how much of a shock it was to us all. Yes, I can imagine. It must have been an even greater shock to her husband. She was a widow. Your bath's nearly ready. I don't suppose you'd come with me, would you? I hate uh, any of those things alone. Go where? Uh, her funeral. It's on Monday. Well, I didn't know her. Well, just to keep me company. Why do you have to go? Well, somebody from the office has to show respects. I got landed with it. No, I find funerals depressing. Well, we could make a day of it. Drive down to the coast later. They'll give me the whole day off. I'm getting a lot of attention all of a sudden. Anybody would think you'd got a guilty conscience. It's just a thought. Have your bath. I'll go and make the booking for dinner. We can decide about money later. This restaurant's not too dressy, is it? That's the game we're in, Alec. Not the love game. The hate game. I 
love you, you know. You could come out together, finish with a whole bloody game, and live in your dream cottage by the sea. Dream's the right word. We've got a home and someone to share with. You know, it could change. All we'd be doing is what one deceit for another. I meant I could get a divorce. <laughs> You'd have done that a long time ago if that was the answer. Alec? Are you right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just felt dizzy for a bit. Yeah. Uh, I must be working too hard. <laughs> well, look, we, we don't have to go out tonight. No, I'm fine now. Fine. Feels both good. I'm fine, I promise. Alec, when Caroline was taken in Berlin, did Jock ever discover who sold her? Oh, I don't know. Maybe he did. I never saw him again. A month after we learned Caroline was in Moscow, Jock was dead, and the whole Austrian network, the Yanks and ours, was kaput. Now, look, I don't mean to open up old wounds, but I must ask you this. Did it ever occur to you that Caroline betrayed Jock and the others? Of course it occurred to me. And? Well, anybody can be broken. Bravery isn't finite. The Yanks were still buddy-buddy at that time, at least on the face of it, but we're all playing a double game. Control thought it was smart to let her keep tabs on it. Where exactly did Jock fit in? He was a top CIA man in Vienna. Worked out fine. And like using Caroline because she spoke fluent Russian. And together, they, they stumbled on something big, something that I didn't share. Why not? It was Jock Shell. He made the rules. I still find that odd. Why? Two heads sharing the same pillar. You are subtle sometimes, Waters. Caroline played it by the book. All right, we shared the same bed, but that's all. Anyway, Control didn't condone my affair, my infidelity. He might have fancied himself, who knows? Anyway, he had the last laugh. I was shipped home just before she was sent back to Berlin for the last time. I'm sorry, Alec, there's no offense. I'm trying to forget a picture. A picture of her on hog slab cut up. She had a lovely face. Sort of mouth you wanted to kiss the first time you saw it. Funny thing is, through it all, I never stopped loving my wife. Would you be the Nicholson party, sir? Yeah. Are we expecting any more, sir? No. In that case, with your permission, we'll proceed, sir. Who conducts the service? I don't think there is a service. Nobody says anything. Well, that's hideous. Really hideous. Is that it? Must be. I've never been to a non-religious service before. Well, let's go, then. Alec, there was somebody else here. Didn't you see him? A tall, well-dressed man. Probably came to the wrong funeral. Do sit down. Thanks. Belfridge turned up at the funeral. Oh, really? Now, what was it uh, you came to see me about? It was Glanville, wasn't it? I heard you'd been asking for his file. Yes. Why Glanville? Discredited old queen, best forgotten. He met Jock once, for all I know, Caroline too. I'd like your permission to interrogate him again, sir. Yes, a touchy subject. <clears throat> Disturbed an awful lot of beasts in our jungle. Well, you read the confession, very full, but I can't recall that Caroline was ever mentioned. Exactly. Maybe that comes under deliberate errors and omissions. I still think he's worth another go, discreetly, unofficially. There's no such thing, Alec. 
Aren't we meant to be a secret organization, sir? Yes, but dependent on our master's largesse, and we've been told to lay off. Caroline's a new development. We're entitled to chase new leads. Now, it's my job to protect us all from the winds of change. You're too close to it, too involved. My firm belief that Glanville's larder was emptied. Are you uh, telling me he's off limits? You haven't given me a straight answer. Mm -hmm. Haven't I? I thought I had. nervous. Just one little chat. Answer my questions and I'll leave you in peace. Thank you. I still have rights, you know. Well, let's not complicate things by bringing rights into it. Just say that I'm an interested onlooker. I know something about you and would like to know more. This is very good coffee, by the way. Does the name Nicholson mean anything to you? No. Okay, let's, uh, let's try oats. Caroline oats. Yes, I think that uh, seems to ring a bell vaguely. When you were with the British Cultural Mission, you knew a friend of mine, a close colleague who's now dead. You met him in Salzburg. His name was Calder, known as Jock. You mentioned him in your interrogation. I didn't know him as Jock. Oh, no, of course not. In those days, everybody used numbers for operatives, but you would have known that he was the head of the CIA station in Vienna. There's a, a fair possibility you were even responsible for his death. Our Miss Oates worked very closely with him, so it's conceivable you also met her. I had 85 hours of questioning. If anything was missed, that's your people's fault, not mine. Or you could have had a continuing reason not to fill in the missing gaps. The reason for our little chat here is to try and rectify any omissions. I was only one of many links in a long chain. Oh, come on, don't be so modest. You send others to their deaths. Why not Jock and Caroline? Who was running you on the other side? Why well, ask questions that you already know? Well, remind me. Henson. Ah, yeah. Yes. Now, uh, shortly before your last known meeting with Jock, Caroline was ordered. Uh, to Berlin. That was her last trip. Did Hansel reveal what it was she and Jock were on to? All that he said was that they were getting too close to something very big. And I felt that my position was endangered, and so I took the necessary precautions. He betrayed them, in other words. Isn't betrayal what this endless game is about? Except you can't quantify death, Glanville. Once you're dead, the game's over. And, uh, You've missed something out. Before they blow the final whistle in our game, they sweat you, and worse. They sweated Caroline in such a way that makes your 85 hours look like kindergarten stuff, first in East Berlin, then in Moscow Center. Even so, it took the best part of six months to clean her out. So you see how gentle we were in comparison. And finally, when a trade-in was arranged, she came home in a wheelchair. Did that worry you, her coming home? Why should I have been worried? He didn't worry you for one good reason. You knew she'd come home a vegetable, that she wasn't any risk. You still thought yourself safe. I didn't know her. Why should I fear her? In our game, we don't have to know people to fear them, do we? It's enough that they know us. It's all over and done with. Let me finish. There's a second act. Caroline comes home a vegetable. Of no apparent threat to anyone. Notice I said apparent, yet ten years later, Someone makes a decision to eliminate what's left of her. Now, why do you think that was? You mean that she was killed here in England? Yeah. She was injected with a fast-acting toxin. That side of it was never part of my involvement. I, I loathe that aspect of it. Nobody's suggesting you did it, sweetie. If I thought that, I'd kill you now with my bare hands. No, what I'm asking is why? What could she have known that still frightened them? 
There has to be a very good reason, wouldn't you say, to murder somebody who couldn't brush a fly off their nose? See how lucky you are? I didn't bring a hypodermic. So search your memory once more. What name did you hold back? The name of somebody so securely hidden you knew you were on sure ground. I know no one of that description. You're lying, Glanville. How do you think we got onto you so easily? We were running Henser by the time Caroline went back to Berlin. We caught him red-handed. He turned as easily as a trout in the pan. <laughs> I'm not going to get tricked by something as crude as that. Your bloody outfit has slipped up again. And now you're looking to blame me for it. We were running Henser, I promise you. When through him, we were running you. No, Henser didn't betray Caroline. What I do believe, however, is you had a very good idea who it might have been. So just throw me a crumb, just a crumb, and I'll leave you in peace forever. If you turned Henser, why didn't he supply the missing answers? Henser's dead. He's dead, shot in the back while he was taking his dog for a walk. Everybody's dead except you and me. I... I've only got your word for it. The woman Oates is dead. You want proof? Well, I've got a photograph for you to look at. There, take a look at that. Go on, look at it, look at it, look at it. That was once a pretty girl. The what price pettiness on the autopsy table. When they cut you open and stitch you up again, they don't try for needle point prices. I'm not feeling well. I've been, a, I've been through a great deal these past months. True, none of us are in the peak of condition. But don't worry, if you faint, I'll catch you. I won't promise to give you mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, but I'll massage your wrists for you and still be here when you come round, asking the same questions for as long as it takes. So tell me who your dancing partners were. Uh, the ones still in place, and where are they? In Bonn, Salzburg, Berlin, where? Closer to home. But I'm only guessing. You're stalling. I want to know who's still in place. Who are you protecting? For the last time, I don't know. It's like you said, they're all dead. Caroline was not killed by a dead man. You should ask your friend when he was still alive. He, he knew. Who are you talking the about? The one you called Jock. What did Jock know? When I met him that time in Salzburg, he said he suspected that Moscow was getting a day-to-day -day playback of the entire East Berlin operation. Huh. And that all the signs were that the leak was coming from London. He wouldn't give any details. He just said it's on their bloody doorstep. Does that satisfy you? Will you leave me in peace now? I don't know how you define peace. I've paid the price, whatever you think of me. In the last analysis, it all rests on the spin of a coin. Aren't you lucky the race was run here? They don't give you a coin to spin in Moscow. continued against the dollar yesterday is pushing up industry's costs according to the director general of the CBI. An opposition spokesman heavily criticized the government's handling of the economy and has called for an emergency debate. Should I so throw my hat in first? Sorry, I'm late, darling. Peace offering. Lovely. I'll put them in water. Much of the debate I kept you some dinner hot, but it's probably uneatable by now. This looks fine. Don't suppose it occurred to you to ring me, did it? You said I'm sorry. Sorry for being late, or sorry for having an affair? What? Are you having an affair? Of course I'm not. What on earth made you say that? Well, I'd have thought that was obvious. It's not to me. Really? Well, let me put it this way. It's obvious you don't find me attractive anymore. That's well, stupid. I can't remember the last time of course we made Of course I up. find you attractive. Come home at all hours, never Nothing's tell me changed as far as I'm concerned. Well, hasn't it? I can't believe we're having this conversation. Well, we've got out of the habit of talking to each other, haven't we? <sighs> For God's sake, I was late. I've said I'm sorry. What the hell brought all this up all of a sudden? I've thought about it a lot. I've, I've had a lot of time to think about it. I don't know you anymore I what are we we're we're not husband and wife we're just two people living under the same roof I'm sorry you feel like that 
I'm not having an affair. There's nobody else. I don't want there to be anybody else. Well, perhaps you should. Yes, I mean it. Perhaps you should. Perhaps, perhaps that would make you happier because, dear God, I certainly don't make you happy. It's not about that. I didn't mean that. It's not that. What is it to do with? Tell me. I, I, I want to know. Tell me. Look, I, I can't go on like this. This nothing life until we're both too old. I want something more than that. You you exclude me from your life. You're not listening to me, are you? Yeah, of course I am. It doesn't matter. Dubbed by the press as the fifth man of the infamous Cambridge spy ring recruited in the 30s, Glanville had been living the life of a semi-recluse in Lincolnshire. His body was found earlier today by a local farmer, and he'd apparently died of a heart attack. Curious. Two burnt-out cases suddenly disposed of. First Caroline, and now a discredited double agent. And of course, there is a connection. Alec, you were the last person to see him alive. What gives you that idea? A simple device known as a bug. Your voice on the tape, Alec. You were careless, even uttered threats. I wouldn't be so stupid as to kill Glanville. He was alive and lying when I left him. Yes, I know that. But others might not be so lenient. After all, you were stupid enough to go against my orders and you were digging in somebody else's plot. Glanville didn't die in his sleep. He was murdered. Murdered, moreover, by a nerve gas of a type issued to the firm for special occasions. Questions are going to be asked, Alec. Questions will need to be answered. You know, you've always struck me as being an angry man. Oh, you hide it well. But I, I sense it's, it's there, just beneath the surface like a blind boil in adolescence poised to erupt. Well, you're going to need your anger. You're going to need a lot of it, real and faked. Because I'm sending you back, Alec. Where? To where it all began. To where it all began, Alec. You'll have to obliterate your old self, Alec. Make them believe you're ready to defect. idea we were looking for company. We uh, must have wandered in by mistake. Perhaps we'd be happier elsewhere. Why don't we piss off and leave me alone? <laughs> don't flatter yourself. I'm not into pulling old age pensions. In this day and age, it is my duty to ensure that minority elements in our society, who are not otherwise causing offence, have the full protection of the law. From the evidence, it is quite clear you made an unprovoked attack, doubtless from prejudice. And because of that, and even allowing for your previous good record, I am sentencing you to six months imprisonment.
No, I just don't get it. It's out of character, Alec, disappearing like that. Selling the house. He... He wouldn't just leave without saying anything. You don't think so? No, I don't. <laughs> no mystery. He just wasn't up to it anymore. After he came in from the cold, he seemed to have lost his touch. He was living in the past too much. But if you're so concerned about Chummy, go and ask C. I might just do that. My dear Warrington, the day we have nothing to hide is the day we all pack up and go home. Let us just say that he trod on some sensitive toes and it was felt to be of mutual benefit for him to move on. He was booted, in other words. Your words, not mine. But, sir, Alec and I were working closely together on the Caroline Oates murder. If there is something sinister, I've got a right to know. Obviously, you're hard of hearing, Warrington. As far as we're concerned, Hilston never existed. There's no trail to follow. Trail ends here. Come back, I see from this you worked for a firm of wine merchants for several years. Why did you leave? I was made redundant. Uh -huh. Well, you must have received some redundancy pay then. What happened to that? She got in. Who's she? The wife. Where's your wife now? Don't know. It's over. Last I heard she was getting a divorce. Look, Mr. Hilsden, you're obviously an educated man. You must see the life you're leading at the moment can only have one end. If your luck's out, it's out. Have you got a light? It says behind you, no smoking. If you're going to get on your feet again, you've got to make the effort. Now, what I'm prepared to recommend, if you cooperate, is to get you into a hostel. <coughs> <coughs> But you'll get a roof over your head and some pocket money. If you're going to pick yourself up out of the gutter, now is your last chance. Where is this place? The one I'm thinking of is just outside Plymouth. It's run by the Brothers of Mercy. Mm. I'm not going to pick myself up being on my knees all day, am I? I praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart, in the council of the just and in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, sought out according to all his wills. His work is praise and magnificence, and his justice continueth forever and ever. He hath made a remembrance of his wonderful works, being a merciful and gracious Lord. if I seemed uh, rude the other day. I didn't notice. Oh, yeah. It wasn't until after that I realized we'd met before. Really? Yes, Carlo. Wedding. Last summer in Portofino, remember? Carlo who? Well, if you have to say Carlo who, then it means I'm wrong. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. Are you Italian? Yes. My name is Daniela. I'm James. Sounds like a good wedding. 
Sorry I wasn't invited. Why aren't you in the Portofino sun now? I'm on holidays. What about you? Oh, I'm here for my health. The bracing sea air, you know, keeps one alert, sharpens the brain, gives one extra sensory perception. Tell me, uh, what other weddings did I miss? What do you mean? Well, you see, this is uh, private property, reserved for naughty boys like me. The Brothers of Mercy, in their infinite wisdom, don't allow attractive women to flaunt themselves on their beach. They're funny that way. They're worried that some of us might be tempted to commit a mortal sin to add to our others. So, shall we start again? Let's take it that your name isn't Daniela, although it's a pity because it really suits you any more than mine is James. Go back to whoever sent you and tell them I'm not in the market. You're very clever, Mr. Hilston. Not really. I've just been at it longer. Wouldn't you like to know what happened to your Caroline? Would that tempt you? Listen, you're a sexy lady, but don't think you can just smile, flash your tits, and I'm going to roll over and beg. You're a long way from Portofino. I still know a trick or two. It wouldn't take much to drown you, so don't fool around. We don't fool. Take a look. He's been listening to everything we've said. You're not dealing with amateurs. Wait for them to make the first move. They will, believe me. You're different from what I imagined. Didn't they brief you? People don't come to life just by reading about them. In what way am I different? You're attractive. I hadn't allowed for that. Were you uh, expecting a monster? No. In any case, monsters have a habit of looking normal until they're caught. I wasn't expecting to be uh, taken prisoner by someone like you, either. Is that what you think of yourself? As a prisoner? You don't trust me? Ah, uh, my dear. Trust isn't a word to be found in the dictionary we both use. What's Jenny's end for me? I won't be going with you all the way. He meets us, then others take over. Ihr solltet hier bleiben. Ich hole die zwei ab. Mr. Hilston, I'm very happy to receive you. My name is Hansel. As in Hansel and Gretel, no doubt. <laughs> this way, please. When will I see you again? Whenever you're free. I'm always available for you. <laughs> God, I wish I... You're such a...
darling, it's too good for me. I'll try and get away this weekend. We'll spend two whole days together. Oh, fine. Take care, huh? Don't see me out, just in case. I adore you. Ciao, amore. Sending you back, Alec, to where it all began. It was Control's decision. He knows about us. It's on their bloody doorstep. It was Control's decision. You disturbed all manner of beasts in our jungle. Everything points to the weak being in London. Control's decision, decision, decision. Sorry to disturb you. It seems we have been overtaken by events. We will have to make new arrangements. It's all balls. I couldn't have murdered this man. On the day he was killed, I was already across the channel. Whether you did or whether you did not is of no consequence to us. What matters is that London says you did. By now, every police force in Europe will be looking for you. We, on the other hand, could protect you. And the new arrangements, did they come from London too? There aren't any, are there? It was always planned this way. You have no choice, Mr. Hillsden. We will move you tonight. Look at it this way. It is, after all, a journey home. <laughs> Sam je sam ti se dvjerio. I have been looking forward to this, Alec. May I call you, Alec? Sure, let's be on intimate terms from the start, shall we? Thank you. My first name is difficult to pronounce in English, and there's no real equivalent. So why don't we settle for you calling me Victor? I have feelings for what you are experiencing at this moment. Those who change sides always feel isolated in the beginning. Excuse me, do you wish for one of these? No, no, I'll stick to cigarettes. Well, both are bad habits. We should know better. But one can't surrender all vices, can one? And we should never forget that none of us are immortal. Are we going to talk philosophy? We're going to talk about many things, I hope. 
There's no hurry, no darkness at noon. As you can see, I have no thumb screws. You're an important guest, Alec, to be treated with uh, respect. Uh, such a dirty habit smoking. We're in a dirty business, Vector. Slowly, piece by piece, we're going to remake you. Tell me again, who ordered Caroline back to Berlin that last time? You said it was his American jock. No, I didn't. The jock was running the CIA Austin station. Yes, but he didn't give us. He didn't make our decisions. He didn't make our decisions. Control set her back. What makes you so sure? She told me so herself. But you say you never knew the reason. No. You were out of favor at the time. I'd broken the troll's rules. He considered me too emotionally involved. And where are you? I was in love with her. Love warps judgments, doesn't it? The human variety, perhaps. Not love for her, of course. Did you suspect this jock had any part in the decision to send her back to Berlin? Well, like Caroline, he had his orders. I wasn't part of it. What was your relationship with jock? I thought he was good at his job. A street fighter. Good man to have on your side, not somebody to cross. My personal relationship? Closest he ever allowed. He didn't let anybody get really close. That was his method of survival, except, of course, he didn't survive. Were you surprised at his death? We're never surprised, are we, that our trade holds terminal dangers? Let's stay with the love of your life. When she was taken, who did you suspect had betrayed her? Some people well, then have been turned. You're too good to be taken unawares. The speed with which it happened suggested you were expecting it, so who tipped you off? I'm asking the questions. How about Jock's relationship with Caroline? How close were they? Well, they, they were lovers, if that's what you mean. You're not doing so well today, Alec. For some reason, you're holding back. Why is that? Doing my best. Alec. You and I know we are more often known by our masks than by our faces. What does your mask tell me? The man who will accept exile or the man who still has doubts? If I peeled it off, would I reveal uncertainty? No. Just another mask. Alec. Good news this morning. We have decided to give you better quarters. It's a reward for your good behavior. So get yourself a rest. life begins. It's a nice change, huh? Eh? We'll be happy here. Is this to be my permanent home? We'll see. First, we're going to prepare you for the next stage. Madame Vyotkin will take good care of you. Tanya, he will call me Tanya. You like vodka, Mr. Hilius Jen? Yes, I do. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. I prepare food. When you have drunk and they're hungry, you eat very well, Mr. Hilius Jen. It's Hilsden. Is that not what I said? Well, let us drink to your wise choice. Pour yourself some more, please. While you rest here and get yourself in good shape, 
I want you to study and learn this. It's something I have prepared for your first public appearance. What will that be? The press conference you will be giving in due course. It's always better to rehearse these occasions. That way we avoid any mistakes. You want me to learn this? Yes. Somebody will be here to help you with it, somebody who knows the procedures, and at the same time will be an agreeable companion for you. Hello, Alec. Welcome to the club. Hello, Jack. You've heard my news. What about you? You're the uh, you're the one who died. The man who never was, buried in Vienna's central cemetery, got a headstone provided by the State Department. How about that? I even went back there once and put some flowers on my grave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was there a special reason for killing you off officially? The reason, old pal, is in our stars. Let's just say I was never cut out to be a hero. So when they got me, I just settled for the best terms on offer. That worked out okay. Sure, well, for you too. Change of the subject and going back to the old days. Uh, whose idea was it to send Catiline back that last time? Not mine. I was against it. The plan was that they were. Wait, gonna... wait, wait, wait. Plan? Whose plan? Well, it was a joint operation between Control and the boys at headquarters in Langley, Virginia. Caroline was supposed to defect when she went back into Berlin, uh, make them think she turned, and then find out the identity of the super mole in London. Glanville thought you knew. Bollocks. I saw him the day before he was murdered. If I knew anything you think I'd be here, I'd have taken the first plane to Australia, written a fancy memoir, and become a millionaire. <laughs> well, somebody's still in place. Alec, there are four aces and two jokers in every pack. You lose a hand, you fix the pack. Who cares? What's one more mole, more or less, among friends? The main news story tonight concerns the missing MI6 officer, Alec Pilston, who was wanted in connection with the murder of Sir Charles Belfridge. At one time, it was widely believed that Hilston committed suicide, but the trail ended today in Moscow, where Hilston surfaced and gave a press conference. My decision to come to Russia was a matter of personal moral choice. I could no longer give my loyalty to an organization that in close collaboration with the CIA actively sought to bring about a confrontation with the Soviet Union. I became convinced that I had to make the choice between serving a decadent society and a society dedicated to peace. I have made that choice. The Home Secretary, Toby Bailden, will be making a full statement to the House tomorrow. The opposition has tabled an emergency debate on the security service. Housewarming gift. Ah. Answers to the name of Gromyko. You're pissed. Canaries don't answer to anything. They may be pissed off, but I'm nowhere near pissed. Right, what's the matter? Your friend Abramov has decided, for some reason best known to himself, to keep me here. They've given me an apartment on the fourth floor. Rather less luxurious than this, I must confess. I've always wanted a canary, John. <laughs> I wouldn't put up a fight if you're forced to drink between my lips. Ah, I'm not stopped up yet. They gave me some money, but I don't know how or where to spend it. Leave it to me. In the words of MacArthur, I shall return and liberate you. Well, good morning. Come to see how the rich live? Just off to get some liquid bird seed. <laughs> I put him in the same building because I thought he could be helpful to you until you find your bearings. Hmm. Do you find him changed? Well, I expect we've both changed since we last met. Oh, yes, I'm sorry I sprang a surprise on you. It must have been quite a shock. Drowning is usually permanent. Excuse me. They're so stupid, these birds. Born in captivity, but they never get used to it. I think your friend Calder is not enamored of Moscow. He prefers 
Switzerland. Is that where he lives now? Yes. Didn't he tell you? If you could bring your influence to bear on your friend, it would be a personal favor to me. He has a tendency to, what you call it, kick over the braces? <laughs> traces. Traces. Thank you. Not a wise thing to do in his position. Why don't we do a trade? I'll be his minder. There are some gaps in my life I'd like to fill. Why Caroline was killed, for instance, and uh, by whom? Well, we'll see. I'll bear it in mind. It's early days yet. We had some good times back in Austria, didn't we? The three of us. Those were good times. Did we know they were good times, or is it only now that we think they were? Hmm. There were better times. But the past is a foreign country. That's very profound. I like that. It's not mine. Hartley wrote it. Hartley, as in Hartley's jam? <laughs> L.P. Hartley, the novelist. The past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. You are well read. Such a romantic sod. What you need is a little nookie. What I need is a little nookie. I can lay that on, but I can't promise the romance. Haven't you ever been romantically in love? Tried it once, didn't work. Can't get it up for love, old son. Dead soldier. Okay. Party time, what's your preference? You know my type. Remind me. Caroline. Leave it to Jock. A nod's as good as a wink. My place tomorrow night, dress in formal wear. Pajamas, all drinks, on the house. I'm gonna turn in. Sleep well. <clears throat> Arise, ye prisoners of starvation. Arise, ye wretched of the earth. For justice thunders condemnation. You're wrong about control. It was his decision that I should go back. He knows about us. You sure? Yes. Last time I went to Salzburg, he turned up in the seat next to me at the opera. The usual sense of the theatrical, I suppose. Tell me then. Together, we're an unacceptable risk. Divide or be conquered were his exact words. OK, he knows. It makes it easier. Well, darling, why pretend anything could ever be easy? Control isn't God. Just because he offers you absolution, you don't have to accept. Does what we have count for anything? That's unfair. I'm not trying to be fair. I want to keep you. Well, perhaps I want to go. Didn't that ever occur to you? Well, it would give me hope. I'm good at waiting, if nothing else. Mm. I love you, and I don't want to lose you. Don't make it sound so final. So go together, love and hope. Is that Jock out there? Hmm. He's going to miss you too in his way. We were good all together. Three of a kind. I shall miss you both. But that's not what we're talking about. You better get back, I suppose. Don't want uh, Jock to beat us to it. Wouldn't do to be late for the last supper, would it? Alec, how are you? How are the lessons going? Fine, I think I'm making some progress. Try me with something. Uh, oh, 
Omi Ayas Vapros. Very good. What's the question? Well, Calder's invited a couple of women to his apartment tonight, and being the new boy, I thought I ought to ask you if such uh, uh, entertainments are allowed. I appreciate that, Alec, but you're not telling me anything I didn't know. I think you like the girls I've approved. But you are quite right to check with me. Always feel free to come to me if you're in doubt about anything. You haven't forgotten your side of our arrangement? No. But for the time being, just enjoy yourself. Good to know. introduce you. Uh, don't get up, ladies. Save your strength. Uh, Alec, uh, meet, uh, uh, this of course is... Uh, Inga. Inga. And uh, this is uh, uh, Katya. Radvitya. Ochen show, Tovarich. Listen, Alec, um, you're my guest and uh, this party's for you, so you take first pick of the girls. I'm easy. Oh, it's a little cold-blooded when I've not uh, had a drink yet. Oh, what a lousy host I am. This is French wine obtained with great difficulty. Uh, listen, chum, there's only one Schlotzimmer, so you get first pick of the girls and I get first use of the bedroom fair dues. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take uh, the blonde, Inga. In the, the blonde, Inga, Inga. Well, mm -hmm. we can always swap later. Katya, tonight's your night. Yes, you get a crack at the title. Ah, Orchinia Lubienta Nam Posietiti. You can talk in English if you like. I speak a little. Ah, oh, whew, whew. <laughs> You are the first uh, Englishman that I meet. Uh, they tell me you are very important men, uh, that I must take care of you. Oh, then I'm a very lucky man. Uh, people uh, don't uh, live in London. Well, a lot of people live in the city, yes, but because of the size of the place, I mean, a lot of people have to come in to work, commute. They're called commuters. Do you have commuters in Russian? I you know? Yeah. You do? Commute. C commuters. <laughs> commuters. <laughs> commute. Commute. What's the Russian of commute? I, commuters. You know? I don't know. Jock? Jock, you all right? Hey, Jock, open the door. Went wrong. Gotcha. Went wrong. Jesus Christ. What did you do to her? She'll be all right. Well, I know I'm not a doctor. Here's your phone. We need help. Huh? huh? Hey, where's your phone? I don't have one. Inga, Inga. Look after her. Keep her warm. Get here. Sit down, sit down. Sit down. Telephone. Nie, you don't tell your phone. Nie, szczęśliwy słuchaj. Ach, nie szczęśliwy słuchaj. Pożałujcie, dzwonicie, pożałujcie, pożałujcie. Abramov. She 
dead? Right. This is what you do. You do nothing. Stay there. I'll take care of everything. Спасибо. People are talking to me, all what right? What the hell's gonna happen to me? I don't know what's gonna happen to you. You just better pray that that girl's gonna be all right. Oh. She'll be all right. Just started as a, as a bit of fun. It should be all yeah. right. Who, who'd you ring? Abramoff. Who do you think? Oh, God, why him? What the hell am I gonna say to him? Still alive? Yeah. Is she in there? Duda. Go to your apartment and stay there. Take the other girl with you. Don't talk about this to anybody. I'll deal with him. Nikamu, ni chodom, so as vitri. KGB. Something like that. But you had nothing to do with what happened. Well, I was there. I mean, we were both there. And that's all they need. You don't understand. You're not one of us. Come on. Come on. Get in, I wish to talk to you. How's the girl? Dead. The true circumstances have to be concealed, you understand? Officially, she will have died in an automobile accident. What about the other girl, the one that was with me? She's been relocated to East Berlin for her own protection. What'll happen to Jock? He's a more difficult problem. Where is he? Well, by now, he should be back in his own apartment. Suitably uncertain as to his own fate. But it's you I want to discuss first. You're one of us now, Alec. And you must start thinking like one of us. I have a proposition to put to you. You attach great importance to finding out the truth concerning the death of your ex-mistress. If I reveal the identity of her killer, and if I were to so arrange matters as to bring you face to face with him, what would you do? How strong are your feelings? I don't know. Uh, I can't give a positive answer. Why not? I've never killed. Perhaps if I gave you a name, it would help you to make up your mind. that concentrate your thoughts? I don't believe you. Why would I lie? 
Surely the events of last night must have convinced you that he's a man capable of anything. Think about that. After what happened in the flat, you have to believe such a man would think nothing of injecting a lethal poison into the woman you once loved. He has two sides to him, your friend. Now you know them both. I need more proof. If you're still unconvinced, I'll make a further concession. Confront him with it. Let him tell you himself. Why would he do that? He would if you offered him a deal. That you pleaded with me on his behalf and that you saved his neck over the dead girl. I still can't promise that I'll go through with it. But you will try, won't you, Alec? I'm sure you will try. Stayed away as long as I could, old pal. Got myself together finally. I'm all right now. Gee, it's dark in here. All the lights fused or something? I find it relaxing. I don't know what got into me, but it's all tidied away now after a rather unpleasant session with our mutual keeper. I have to lie low for a while. You were terrific, Alec. You did all the right things saying very much. Anything happened to you? Well, I saw Abramoff, too. You did? When? Last night. I came up to find you. You weren't home, so I went to eat. I was obviously tailed. He picked me up when I left the restaurant. Did he give you a rough time? No. The conversation mainly centered uh, around you. What did he say? Presumably what you already know. He was concerned that the girl had died. What are you talking about? Well, she's dead. Don't tell me you didn't know. Of course I didn't know. Oh, man. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I, uh, I put in a good word for you. Managed to talk him round. What? Well, officially, the girl died in a car accident. The other girl, Inga, was bought off. You're safe. You wouldn't kid me, would you? No. I did it for old time's sake. I shan't forget I owe you one. Funnily enough, uh, we got talking about old times, about you, me, and Caroline. Caroline? Why Caroline? What would he want to know about her? Well, it's what I wanted to know. There are still little things that, uh, that nag. Abramoff suggested that You'll be the best person to ask. Why me? Well, you still haven't filled me in on the... on your full part in the story. Alec, it's water under the bridge. I know you cared a lot about her. I cared about her too. But we can't bring her back. I didn't just care about her. I was in love with her. Love complicates things. What do you want to know? The end of the story. It's not exactly a bedtime story. I'm not looking for comfort. Well, if we're going to get into this, I'm going to need a drink. A large hair of the dog. You're out of luck. I'll finish the bottle just before you can. Well, let's retire to my place. By the way, is the bird singing yet? It's starting to. I was always in it strictly for the money. You think the boys at Langley were ever going to give me the golden handshake tucked away in a Swiss numbered account? No way. I didn't blow either network. Who did? Control. Control. 
He was the one who betrayed Caroline because she got too close for comfort. Since he was running her direct from London, using me as the post office, he was ahead of her every step. She only had one ace in the hole. What was that? Packet of photographs, hot photographs, 10 to be exact. What, photographs of uh, control? No, no. She met with an East German called Henze, but he hadn't grasped their significance, Caroline got it immediately. They were the last piece of the puzzle. Not only could they blow control clean out of the water, they could also sink the entire Russian operation in England. How do you know all this? Because I saw them. At least I saw nine of them. Caroline posted them to me using that safe house we had in Vienna. With Hensa dead, she had to move fast, and sending them to you was too risky, so it had to be me. And luckily, they proved to be my insurance policy. What happened to the, the last one, the 10th photograph? She banked that herself, literally. She posted it to London, addressed to herself, care of Lloyd's Bank, St. James Street, where she kept her savings. Just in time, because they took her the next day. But for a long time, they couldn't break her. How did they break her? I have to tell it in a certain order, so you understand my part in it. When they got me, it didn't take me long to realize control was the mole. Why? Well, he was the only one, apart from you and Caroline, who knew the safe house in Vienna. Hey, take it easy with that stuff. I found out I wasn't brave like you're supposed to be. Couldn't even bear pain for myself. So when they offered me a deal, I told them everything. I thought I was saving her. But they must have picked up on something I let slip. What was that? I told them about the room. The room? The room in Austria, at the castle, where all the flies went to die. You told me it freaked her out. And they've made a science of collecting fears. How could I know they'd use it? How could I have even imagined it? How did they use it? They built a replica. Reproduced it like a bloody film set. Filled it with flies and put her inside. She lasted five days and then she broke. Can you open this? I'm all thumped. Well, there you have it. At least say you understand. Oh, I understand uh, what it must have been like. Presumably, part of your deal was the packet of photographs. Yeah. And what about the tenth one? Did you tell them about that? How could I? I didn't know about it then. Got to shake hands with an old friend. So how did you find out about it? Find out about what? The tenth photograph. First ask me who was on it. Okay, I'm asking. A girl and a man. Any guesses? They brought you over on a boat, didn't they? Oh, that girl. You mean the Italian? Yes, that girl. Now, who was the man? Oh, Belfridge? Glanville? Control? No, not even one. Let me take it slowly for you. Go back a bit. Hense gives the photographs to Caroline, but he doesn't twig the significance. Why should he? He's just a local boy from Berlin. Caroline, on the other hand, gets it in one. Now, for a long time, nobody here knew of the existence of the 10th print, me included. They've got my set. They think they've got the lot. Then they trade Caroline. She goes home, and Caroline's efficient bank manager traces her whereabouts, and along with her savings account, he included the photo. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So, let me ask you something, because it puzzles me. 
Why didn't you ever visit Caroline? Like you. I found I couldn't face it when it came to the crunch. If you had, you'd have spotted it. But somebody else did. And told Control. Just one of a small army of hibernators nobody looks at too closely. Let's suppose, just suppose, you'd been the one. Let's suppose you had paid Caroline a visit, and there on her bedside table beside the Mickey Mouse clock is this picture. Pretty girl, so you take a look. You take a closer look, and what do you see? Standing with his arm round the girl, none other than Her Majesty's present home secretary. Failed them? None other. Control's had him on ice for years. Now, knowing you, you'd have put two and two together. Why would she have that on display? You'd start pulling in the long daisy chain. You were on the scent anyway without that. Belfridge, Glanville, your nose was pointed in the right direction. So Control had to start clearing the decks. After arranging for Caroline's elimination, he set about disposing of the others. And you were on the list. He eliminated you in a different way. Tell me more about the Mickey Mouse clock. How easy was it, huh? Easier than killing that little tart in Soho. Easier than the girl here the other night. Is it easier to use a hypodermic than your bare hands? Go on, you can tell me. It wasn't like what was it like, Jack? She wasn't there. I did her a favor. She wasn't there anymore. If you loved her, you'd have done the same. It, it was an act of charity. Putting an old dog down, you mean? Is that what you're trying to say? You're going, pal. Don't leave. Don't leave, chum, without saying you understand. It, it was like I said. You'd have seen it. She wasn't there.
Happy New Year. Oh, Happy New Year. Thank you very much. What a good way to start it. Don't you skate? Well, I tried it once. Fell straight off my ass. <laughs> Let's go to the house, eh? Christen this. Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. I brought you the latest English paper. As you'll see, the New Year has brought some changes there. <laughs> the game goes on, Alec. Yes. Yeah. <laughs>